Welcome to the second part of the 3D frame analysis and slab analysis movie. Here we're going to look at the advanced parts, that is meshing and results. Finite element meshing is an extremely strong part of the Robot Millennium solution. Here we have a simple mesh which has been generated as a coarse mesh inside Robot. We can simply change that mesh to make it finer. Maybe by using a normal mesh or a fine mesh or in fact a user defined mesh. Here we are changing to a normal mesh. It should be noted that changing the mesh does not affect any part of the structure such as loading or materials that have been defined. Now we can make a user defined mesh. In this case a mesh using emitters. Emitters are areas where elements radiate from. Emitters are necessary normally around areas such as corners and openings. Such a mesh is generated automatically inside robot. In addition to standard emitters, we can also choose places on the structure where we wish to have emitters as well. We're now going to define some emitters. When we mesh the structure again, we will see that the area of elements around the emitter are much smaller. In addition to emitters, we can also choose to refine the mesh locally, simply by selecting some elements on the screen. Again, it should be remembered that things such as loads and materials that we have defined are completely unaffected by this change. We're now going to calculate the structure. and now investigate some results. Initially the results for the columns. A simple bending moment diagram. And as before we can interrogate the moments, shears, displacements and make a simple code check on these structures. For each load case. In addition to beam results, we can also get results for the surfaces that we have defined. In this case, the second floor slab. Maybe look at the display shape of that slab as a contour map on the screen. Again, for each load case. To enable the interpretation of finite element results to be more simple, we have also incorporated something called panel cuts, which allows us to view, just like it would on a beam, a bending moment diagram taken across a cut on the structure. Here is a typical cut. When we are happy that we have a correct view, we can make a screen capture and later incorporate that in a printout.
Naturally, tables of results occur, as well as graphical results. It's also very simple to filter these results to ensure that we don't end up with too much data on, on the printout. Again, we make a screen capture of these results. And now maybe we can look at the results for the wall. A particularly useful part of robot is the reduced results for panels option, which takes the stresses in the wall panel and will integrate the results of that wall panel across the structure. In other words, giving us bending moments, axial force and shear net results across a predefined line. And again, we can now look at the printout. As before, we choose from some standard printout options and some screen captures. In this case, we're going to take some data about the members as the first part of the printout, data about the sections, loading and so on. And then add the screen captures. The printout preview allows us to see exactly what we have. And as we suggested earlier, we can now take this printout if we wish and convert into Word format. Once the printout has been made and the meshing has been made, it's a simple task to change the structure. In this case, we're changing one of the supports from a pinned to a fixed support. Simply recalculate the structure. And any printout that we have previously made is automatically updated. We can also change an item in the printout simply by double clicking it in the printout composition, choosing a new view, and then pressing the return to preview button, and our printout also changes.